it's finally that time of year, the sun is shining, and here are some summer healthy weeknight meals for you. Welcome back to my kitchen. I'm so excited to be sharing some plant-based, healthy summer weeknight meals that you can eat outside in the garden, al fresco dining with the sun out, the long evenings, it's just the best time of year for food. And very excitingly, this is also a big announcement that my new website is now live. We have been working on this for over a year, photo shoot after photo shoot, designing, tweaking, making everything run smoothly and perfectly. All of the recipes in this video are brand new and they are on my new website. You'll see loads of new recipes, blog posts about lifestyle, about my home, about sustainability. All of these topics are now on my website and I really hope that you enjoy having a little flick through and a read. And if you wanna stay in touch and see what's to come in the future, because it's a whole new platform that I'm gonna be sharing with you and that I've just launched, then definitely sign up to my newsletter. It'll be a monthly newsletter sharing all of my content as well as all of my top recommendations. So it's kind of like an exclusive newsletter with all of the things that I'm enjoying and can recommend you directly in your inbox. So go have a little look at the website, have a scroll, let me know what you think. And if there's any recipes that you have personally loved over the years, or ones that you really are excited to try or that you do try, definitely go and leave a comment on that post. It will mean a lot to me to get the website out there and show me the support if you have been following my recipes for a long time. First, we are starting with a spring onion and pea risotto. This is not only super cheap, but of course it's really simple. There's nothing better than risotto to have at this time of year to enjoy outside and you can have so many seasonal vegetables. I've opted for spring onions and peas. Peas are just such a great staple because they're always in your freezer. So you can just put this together very, very easily. I'm also gonna share with you a really easy vegan Parmesan recipe, which is whole foods. So you don't have to buy anything from the shops and you can store it in your fridge and use it for another recipe in this video and for any pastas or risottos that you love to enjoy in the future. And it's really good for you because it's made with almonds. For your four ingredient vegan Parmesan, you just need half a cup of almonds, quarter of a cup of nutritional yeast, a teaspoon of sea salt, and half a teaspoon of garlic powder. And then you just blend it all up. And there you have a really great fine sand-like powder that you can top your pasta or risotto dishes with. As I said, the ingredients are really easy. We've got arborio risotto rice, spring onions, some lemon and garlic, vegetable stock, olive oil, my peas that are in the freezer, I'm gonna keep them in the freezer until I need them. And we'll throw in some fresh mint leaves as well in there. These are just the perfect thing to have on your windowsill. If you don't already have a mint plant in your home, go to the supermarket. This was literally from Asda, maybe Tesco. And I potted it up and have it on the side and you can use this for recipes or for some fresh mint tea. Heat your oil in a large frying pan and then add in a bunch of chopped spring onion, saving a lot of the green bits for topping later. So this was about 10 spring onions and I've just saved those for topping at the end, along with two garlic cloves, the zest of a lemon, and then just heat this through. Gosh, this smells delish. Don't have it on too high of a heat. This is where you're gonna burn the garlic, medium low heat is perfect. And now pour in your risotto rice and just coat this. This is also where you could add a splash of wine, like 100 ml. Don't have any white wine currently and I don't always add it, but it does add some lovely flavor. So do this now, just to deglaze everything, but just coat your rice in all those lovely oily, spring oniony, garlicky, lemony juices. Now is when you add your stock. And you basically do this one ladle full at a time, stirring and waiting until the liquid is absorbed before you add another ladle. Because you can see how quickly that absorbed. Once it's all absorbed, add another ladle, continuing to stir as you go. And give it a stir. Just keep stirring, just keep stirring. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so we're on to the last bit of stock. So with this, I'll add in our peas. You wanna add these in at the end because then they maintain their lovely green color. And you just stir these through for a couple of minutes until everything is cooked. You can then top this with some extra fresh spring onion that you saved earlier. And here is our gorgeous Parmesan. If you want it to look even more like Parmesan, you can use blanched almonds that don't have the skin, so it will be a whiter color, but these are just the ones I generally have in the cupboard, so I just use these. And then you can just give this a little sprinkle on top. Taste test outside, of course, because it's now that time of year. Mmm. So delicious. I feel like I could just eat that whole plate within about two minutes. And I really recommend you try this Parmesan. It adds so much flavor. It's utterly delicious on top of so many things and it will last quite a lot of time for quite a small amount of ingredients. I just store it in the fridge in a airtight jar. It's been blazing sun up until this moment. <laughs> Peas are wonderful because they're high in protein and they're actually a legume, they're not a vegetable. Um, so they're a great one for that. Mm. All I need to complete this is a glass of white wine. <laughs> it really must be summer because I'm in my summer dress, my book cover dress. <laughs> and we're making an asparagus linguine. It's officially asparagus season the most delicious of vegetables and a really, really special one. This recipe is super easy and you can definitely change this depending on the season. I've thrown in some cherry tomatoes, some breadcrumbs, some chili flakes to make it really, really tasty and it's a perfect sharing dish to enjoy outside in the garden. First, we can toast the pine nuts. You can do this just in a dry frying pan for a couple of minutes until they go lightly brown and then you can set them aside. They're looking pretty toasty. So we can just pop these in a bowl and set them aside for later. Now we can prepare our breadcrumb topping. So add in a tablespoon of olive oil along with a clove of garlic and 75 grams of fresh breadcrumbs. And we're just gonna cook this up. Tip for breadcrumbs is if you ever have a loaf of bread that's going stale, you can just blend that stale bread up, put it in a container in the freezer and then you always have some fresh breadcrumbs. I always do this and it means I've always got fresh breadcrumbs in the freezer to use whenever I need it. Give this a quick season and then you want to just cook this until it looks a bit more golden. Now this is looking nice and golden so we can set this aside as well. Oh it smells yum. Get your pan of boiling water ready for your linguine. Add some salt and bring it to a boil. So now it's boiling, add in your linguine. This is 350 grams. And I would have used a larger pan, but my husband has stolen it to make bread. How dare he? So while your linguine boils, should take like eight minutes or so. You can fry some olive oil, along with two cloves of garlic. Along with a good pinch of chili flakes, cherry tomatoes, and of course, asparagus. And then just cook this on a medium heat while your linguine cooks until everything is nice and softened. Now this pasta is tasting al dente, but we're gonna save a cup of the pasta water. So I just grab a mug, push it in there, take it out and you've got your pasta water for later. Drain our pasta. I grabbed myself a different pan just because that one was too small, like I said. Add in your linguine, your veg, which has got a delicious sauce from the cherry tomatoes. So don't forget that part. Make sure to get all that goodness. The zest of a lemon. This makes it so summery and fresh. 
And then this is optional, but I picked up some vegan creme fraiche. This is from Oatly. You don't have to add this. You can stick with a really simple spaghetti on its own, just like this. If you stir it through, you could even add a little drizzle of some extra olive oil, but it is nice to just add a few sort of tablespoons along with your pasta water and add your pasta water in bit by bit just to make it a little bit more creamy. Half of that tub would be good. This is so fab as a sharing dish to have in the middle. So you can all just grab a big helping of spaghetti, twist it in there, grab all your veg. This smells divine. Top it with pine nuts. You can also stir some pine nuts through. I think that that's probably best is to chuck a handful of pine nuts through the pasta itself so that they're in there. And then of course, with our delicious garlicky breadcrumbs. Oh my goodness. And then you can top it with some fresh parsley. And look what you've got, the most delicious summer asparagus linguine. And of course you can go one step further and you can add a little bit of the parmesan that we made earlier too. In true England fashion, the weather has turned a little bit so we're not gonna dish up outside. It's spitting a little bit with rain and it's a bit gray. <laughs> so I think inside, sometimes realistically in summer is gonna be where you're eating, but you can at least enjoy the summer with the dishes you eat. My mouth is watering. It is watering. Oh my gosh. I could eat this every day of my life for the rest of my life. There's nothing better than a fresh pasta like this. And I'd really recommend in true Italian or Mediterranean fashion to prioritise good quality ingredients. If you're going to buy asparagus or tomatoes or even the linguine, opt for better quality. I find pasta makes such a difference. If you buy the cheap pasta, it's never going to taste as good. You don't have to obviously go all out or spend loads of money. But when you're having a simple dish like this and it's plant based, you cut costs anyway by not having meat or animal products involved. So add a little bit extra cost in the good quality asparagus. Get it from your local farm shop. Get it from somewhere like Riverford and opt for tomatoes on the vine or ones that really smell delicious in season tomatoes. I'm sure lots of you in England, if you live in the UK, in the countryside, there's probably local farm shops or places that have tomatoes that are gonna be delicious. It makes a difference when you um, eat this. These actually tomatoes were from Sainsbury's, but they're ones that are on the vine, so they just taste delish. Mmm. Oh my God. Please let me know if you try this, and it will be just as delicious without the vegan creme fraiche too, if you're gonna go for a, more of a whole foods approach or trying to reduce cost, or if you just don't have vegan creme fraiche. I need to go get a room with this pasta. The next recipe is loaded sweet potato fries. These are gonna be enjoyed and devoured by us this evening for dinner because it's sunny outside. Finally, the sun has come. These are really easy. You just toss them with some delicious spices, chuck them in the oven, and then you load them up with all of the toppings. I've listed in the recipe some great suggestions for what this would work with if you were sharing this with your friends or your family. I've got some burger recipes that would work perfectly with this. And you can also throw some vegan cheese on there if you like, or you can make your own vegan cheese. I've got a vegan nacho cheese that is and would be perfect for this, but let's get into it because I am hungry. So we've got our two sweet potatoes. These are around 700 grams. I like to chop the ends off. You can peel them. I don't tend to bother because my potatoes are usually organic. And then you just cut them lengthways and then into chips or wedges. So if you're totally new to making homemade chips, the way to do it is to chop your potato in half. Sweet potatoes are a little more challenging because they are very hard and they also have funny shapes. <laughs> Potatoes, normal white potatoes, are a little bit easier to chop. Cut it in half, like so. And then if you've got a funny shaped one, you can cut it like that and then work like this. Or you can just run with the shape being awkward. I'm just gonna run with the shape being awkward. And you just cut them into 
chips lengthways. This one's gonna be a little awkward one, so we'll cut him in half, cut him in half. And then once you've got your longer chips, you can then turn them and chop them like this. I do love a nice long chip. So we've got nice big chippies. That one I'm gonna chop in half because it's a little bit extreme. You can also use a bread knife if you have a really big one, it can help a little bit. Chop it in half and then a couple more times lengthways and then you can just take these and halve them. And it means you should end up with relatively even chips. And you can make them whatever shape you like really. If you prefer fries, you can do them a lot more skinny. I like chunky chips. Now we've got all of our potatoes, we're gonna put them in a big bowl with lots of spices. Start with some vegetable oil, about two tablespoons, along with a tablespoon of corn flour. This is gonna really help it crisp up. And then oregano, onion, ground cumin, pinch of red chili flakes. You can leave these out or add as much or little as you like. And smoked paprika and then season these up. And then toss them all together until it's coated evenly. Oh, look how good they look, oh my gosh. Preheated my oven to 200 degrees Celsius and I'm just gonna evenly put these on a baking tray. You can use two if there's, if it's not enough. I might need to use two, we'll see how we get on. No, it should be fine. So just spread these out. And then when your oven is warm, roast these in the oven for 25 to 30 minutes until they are soft. While our potatoes roast, I'm gonna prep some of the toppings, which to be honest, you can really do the things that you want. I am gonna do some spring onion, but you could swap this for red onion. So just slice up these. Some fresh coriander, maybe not quite that much. <laughs> and some fresh mint, just giving my mint plant a little prune. I just love this combo of mint and coriander, it's just divine. And some wedges of lime. Some cherry tomatoes, halved. You can also chop up some chilies. I forgot to get them. So I'm just gonna drizzle some hot sauce on top. But some fresh chilies would be preferable. About eight to 10 of these. Jalapenos. Okay, I have managed to find some sliced jalapenos, but fresh chili would also be great. But so would these, because lots of you probably have jalapenos in your fridge. And then a avocado, which I'm gonna slice when the chips are ready, so it stays nice and fresh. Chips are nice and soft, and I've just rinsed off some black beans, and I'm gonna chuck these on top. And if you're gonna use vegan cheese, grate that on here now. Return it to the oven and cook for a further five minutes until the beans are warm and the cheese is melted. Here we go, our lovely delicious sweet potato. This lovely purple one is from Port Marion. It's their minerals collection and I just love the color. Look at this with the sweet potatoes. Such a great complimentary color. And now we're gonna just top it with our toppings, of course. Some sliced avocado. You can also make like guacamole if you like for even more flavor, but this is just a bit more lazy. And you could even make salsa. God, my mouth is watering. Your spring onion and your coriander and mint. This is a great centerpiece if you're having people over, like I just feel like everyone would really enjoy this just to dig into. And then add some lime wedges around the edge, some jalapenos or fresh red chilies. You can leave it like this, or if you want, you can add a drizzle of mayo. I'm using the vegan Hellman's mayo. You can also do coconut yogurt if you're more into the whole foods approach, or you can make my vegan nacho cheese like I mentioned before, or even some vegan sour cream if you can get your hands on that. 
just do a little drizzle on top and I think that really finishes the whole thing off. How much do you want to dig into this? Yes. Well, we don't want to fall. No. Well, maybe we do, but I don't know. Most people probably would eat this with their fingers, wouldn't they? Yes, you would with nachos. Mm. Might get complicated. This would serve, I think. One to two. No, it's perfect for... One to two people. If you're watching and you have a big family... It would serve one to two of them. <laughs> mm. Plonk this in the middle of the table, everyone's happy. Mm. Gonna get some ASMR eating. It sounds like a cat. Sounds like Zeus. Let's sign off the video. But no, you need to sign off the video with me. <laughs> Thanks again for joining us in this. Another end to another great video. <laughs> Thanks for joining us in this summer edition of Healthy Weeknight Meals. Is that what it is? Yep. You call this healthy. From me. To your stomachs. Yes. See you next time. See you next time. Stay safe. Stay safe. See it, say it, sorted. <laughs> See it, say it, sorted. Now, is it sorted or it's is it sorted? Sorted. It? Is it though? Because on it the signs. It is, because I've seen it on the signs. But on the signs, it also says sort it. Maybe they're just messing with us now. They're messing with us now. Right. Hi. Bye. Subscribe. Check out my new website. Oh, yeah. And sign up to the Very newsletter. Exciting. What is the reason for them to sign up to the newsletter? Because it's a free email. Mm -hmm. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. Give them an incentive. Um, what do you put in the newsletter? <sighs> I don't know. I is thought you'd say something worth signing up? Yeah, I couldn't think of anything. <laughs> I don't know. If you sign up to the newsletter, Alex will appear in more videos. <laughs> yeah, I'll be watching the metrics. Yes. <laughs> la 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 Excited from some linguine. Are you excited for some linguine? Kind of a little outro of us having a great time. This is gosh darn cutie. Cold in the shade though, eh? What? Cold in the shade though. <laughs> I genuinely did not think you were speaking English when you said that. That's what the guy at the post office said. Do I have the hair here? Yes. I get quickly. Making me want to tear my face off. Is that feeling? Yeah. I have a hair on my face every day and it's probably one of my biggest pet hates. Do you have a hairy face? Where do they come from? I don't know. Your butt. Why well, isn't it a healthy midweek? Meals. Meals, there we go. Marvellous midweek meals with Maddie. Mmm. New title. The jalapeno is actually really nice. Probably better than fresh chilies. We have to have a race who makes it to the middle first. <coughs> Definitely going to be me. You are a hungry, hungry horse. Did you just call me a horse? Straight into the horse's mouth. You can take a horse to water, <coughs> but you can't make it drink. Nice one. The old nag. See, I thought this was lots, but it's you're right, it is for one to two people. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose for dinner. If you portion out one plate, you think, okay. No, it's not loads. Because it's potato. Mm -hmm. We don't eat potato enough. No, we don't. Do you know what's missing? A margarita. That's beer. Mm. What kind? Corona. Corona. Delicious. Another. Mm.